Also, if you're watching through BoxCast, the service that we use, it also have a give button. So give to your local church, but if this ministry is, is helping you, you should give to it also. If you hear any problem with the, with the volume or anything like that, just type in a message. Dr. Myrit's watching for all that, and I think she has everything done good. I so appreciate the work that she's done. We traveled last week, and she was such a help to me traveling. So I so appreciate her. Let her know that you love her. Listen, I really want to get into today's lesson. I don't want to keep you long. I hope to keep you about 30, 35 minutes. So just sit back for about 35 minutes, grab your Bible, uh, get a cup of coffee, and let's get ready to hear the word. Amen. Amen. All right. So grab your Bible. We always make a confession of faith. Our confession of faith reminds us and the devil what God has done for us. God already knows it. We need to get it down into our hearts so that in the midst of trials, tests, and tribulation, what's in our heart comes out of our mouth. So repeat after me. This is my Bible. It's God speaking to me. I am what it says I am, and I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised word of God. I boldly confess, I am a doer, not just a hearer. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender. I am the lender. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am the head and not the tail. I am the victor. I am the victor. I am the victor and not the victim. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing, the devil can do about it. Say amen and amen again. Hallelujah. Listen, turn your Bibles to John chapter 1, the book of John chapter 1. I want you to go to verse 15. I'm going to start a new series as I was uh, studying and preparing. There are some basic things I think about what God has provided for us that Christians sometimes take for granted, but they don't fully understand all the benefits included in that. So Dr. Myra has a new car, and she doesn't drive her car often, but when we drive her car, it has so many gadgets and stuff that we don't always take advantage. It even has a little place where you can set it so that if you go over the speed limit, it will give you a warning. Well, well we had the car for a couple of years, but that was available for us, but we hadn't taken advantage of all, everything that was available in the car. I think in our Christian walk, there are things that we know that we have that we really don't take full advantage of. So I'd like to spend the next few lessons teaching you about activating the grace of God in your life. Understanding and activating the grace of God in your life. So today's lesson is a foundational lesson. I just want to give you an understanding of what I call the grace factor. So turn your Bible to 1 John chapter 1, verse 15. 1 John chapter 1, verse 15. This is going to be out of the New King James Bible. I want you to hear this. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, him being Jesus, This was he who, of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me. For he was before me, and of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace for the law was given through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ so now John is telling everybody he's making a proclamation to his followers and to you and I that listen here's Jesus Christ is new on the scene that we might have had the law, but through Jesus Christ, now we're going to have this new thing called grace. That Moses gave us the law, but Jesus Christ is going to give us grace and truth. I really love the way the Amplified Bible lays that out. So I'm going to give it to you in Amplified, starting at verse 16. 
The Amplified puts it this way. For out of his fullness, uh, abundance, we have all received, all had a share, and we all are supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. For while the law was given through Moses, grace, unearned, undeserved favor and spiritual blessing and truth came through Jesus Christ. So there is something that Jesus did in, in his ministry, in, in his life on earth, as God became a man and dwelt among us, as he died upon the cross and had, as he rose up on Resurrection Sunday. There's something that he did for us that nobody else could have done. He gave us the grace of God. Now, if you've been in church any time, you've, you've understood the primary meaning of grace. We've always called it in church that a general meaning is that grace is God's unmerited favor. That God, grace is God's unmerited favor. Now, I believe that most Christians don't really understand the grace factor. It's, grace is just something religious that we say. Uh, I put in my notes, like people always say, I'm blessed. You say, how, how, how you doing? I say, I'm blessed. Well, there's something religious that, that Christians have got a chance of saying because it sounds good, but often when people say, I'm blessed, they don't really even know what it means to be blessed. Because actually, when you say, I'm blessed, what that really means is that I have been empowered by God to prosper. So blessed means that God of the universe has empowered me to prosper. So, it, and I think that if you get this true understanding of the grace factor, if you really get to understand the grace factor and what it means for you, you will be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and have a full understanding to be able to walk and live in it. If you get this understanding of the grace factor. So while it's, it, it's really true that grace is God's unmerited favor, I don't want to change that definition because that definition is a good definition. I want to expand on that definition so that you get a chance to manifest God's best to you, especially as we go into this coming year. Uh, we're just about to enter into November and December, which... God told me and, and all of the prophets say that these are going to be the most challenging months this year, that as we go into this election and as this pandemic kind of makes this return, that these are going to be challenging times. And we're just about to enter into challenging times. And as we go into challenging times, then we need everything that God has provided for us working for us at its full measure. We don't want anything working at 50%. We want everything God has provided for us working at 100%. So I want you to be able to manifest the grace of God in your life at 100% beginning tonight and the next lessons that I learned, especially in the month of November and December and as we go into 2021. Uh, uh, on my prophetic hat, hat uh, the Spirit has told me that the first part, the first quarter of 2021 might be still tough, but as we go into the second quarter, you know, a year has four quarters, so January, February, March is the first quarter, uh, April, May, uh, June is the second quarter. As we go into the second quarter, that the people of God are going to begin to see God's best manifested in their life. So that means that there's still some difficult days ahead, but you got to come out on top. As we're going through these difficult days, I want you to operate in the grace of God. Now, turn to your Bibles, please, to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's, let's start to get this understanding of grace. Ephesians 
chapter 2, I want you to go to verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. I'm going to read this out of, the, out of the New King James Bible. But it's really heavy. It's really deep if you really get an understanding of it. So let's go there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that, not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. All right, so let's kind of break that down. So it said, now, by grace, by God's unmerited favor, by unearned, undeserved, uh, nothing that I could do, by God's grace, I've been saved, I've been sanctified, I've been set free, I've been delivered, I've been healed, I have access to prosperity and wholeness and fullness. All of that is in being saved. So as I've, as I've been saved, as, as I've been delivered from hell, I've, all of that came to me by God's unmerited favor. God just gave it to me. But God didn't just give it to me because it says, I've been saved by grace. By grace you have been saved, but then it says, through faith. Now, faith, as we know, is the faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith in its essence is my trust and belief in God, and God is able and will do what he said. So by my trust, faith, by my, my belief, my trust in God, I have been saved by his unmerited favor. And just to make it clear to me, it says that it's the gift of God, that God gave it to me, that, that I didn't earn it. I wasn't good enough. I didn't do enough good deeds. I didn't help, help enough little old ladies across the street. I didn't feed enough poor people. I didn't go to enough jails. I didn't visit sick people. No, no, wasn't anything that I done, not by works, because if I did it by works, I'd be able to say, hey, I'm better than you because I worked my way into God's salvation. No, 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 you can't work your way into God's salvation. So no one's better than anybody else because it's not of works. It's a gift of God so that anyone can't boast. Amen? Come on. Amen. Yeah, you need to get this. All right, now. So, understand this. Oh, well, well let me read this for you. Uh, you know, I often use the New Living Translation. I use the New Living Translation because now if I'm doing deep Bible study, then I like to use a King James if I'm going to go back and look at the Greek and the Hebrew and do deep Bible study of the meaning of each word, then I want to use a King James, a New King James. I want to use one of those Bibles because it's the, the clearest translation. But often when I want to get the meaning of something, I want to know, okay, well, what does that really mean? Then I'll use a New Living Translation because it's not really a translation. It's really a, more of a paraphrase to say, this is what that means. So let's look at what the New Living says about Ephesians chapter 8, about us being saved through this grace. So Ephesians chapter 8, verse 2, I mean, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, and the New Living puts it this way. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for it. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Verse 10 says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So the New Living makes it clear that, listen, you got into, you've been saved by the grace, the unmerited favor of God when you believed in Jesus Christ, when you exercised your faith in Jesus Christ, then the grace of God 
through that you got saved. You can't take credit for it. It's a gift of God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you have done. Listen, some people in church need to know that. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you have done. That means, listen to this, that means that God's not going to hold back salvation from you for the bad things that you have done, for the mistakes that you have made, for all the things that you should have done and didn't do. God's not going to look at you and say, you're not good enough for my salvation because no one has earned it. So you can't earn it by being good. With your, so you can't disqualify yourself by being bad. No, it's a gift of God. Amen? Are you, are, are, are you with me? Are you getting this? See, you want to live in the grace of God. You want to you, you live day by day in the favor of God. But I can't live in the favor of God without faith. So I like to put it this way, that, that faith is the doorway, but grace is the house. So I want to dwell in the grace of God. But in order to get into the grace of God, I do it by faith. See, because in the grace of God is everything that you need. My grace is sufficient. You heard that scripture? My grace is sufficient. My grace is enough. My grace is all that you need. Because when you are weak, I am strong. So in the grace of God is everything that we need. And I can't earn it. Now I'm going to teach you later that I can multiply it, but I can't earn it. So I want you to get this understanding of the difference now between grace and faith. They're not the same thing. They, they both are powerful. They can both can, can change your life. But you need to understand that they are different in order for us to fully activate this grace in our life. Amen? Come on, say amen. Amen. If you're getting it, say amen. So I'm getting it, Pastor Scale. Say, so, so Dr. I, yeah, yeah, that's good. Amen. I'm preaching myself happy. All right, so now, I want you to turn to Mark chapter 5. I want you to go to Mark chapter 5. I, I want you to look at two situations that you should be very familiar with that will highlight for you the difference between the grace of God and faith in God. Okay? Now, all right. Here's how it works. Now, you know, this is a story about the woman with the issue of blood. I know everybody knows the story, but some people might be listening that are not, not Bible scholars. So I'm going to read it just for those who are not Bible scholars or those who might need to be reminded of it. So it's Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Again, this is out of the King James, or the New King James. It says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, we know that faith comes by hearing. So when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. So she heard about Jesus. Faith come, came, and we know that faith without works is dead. So when she heard about him, she got faith, and because of her faith, she went up and, and touched her garment. Now, look at verse, verse 28 says this. Touch his garment. Verse 28 says this. For she, has, for she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. So she said, listen, if only I can touch his clothes. See, she spoke out of her mouth what she believed by faith. Faith needs to be activated by the words of your mouth. So she heard about Jesus. She got faith. Then she spoke it. She said, if I could but touch his garment. And then she acted on what she believed. She said, I could be made whole, made well. Verse 29. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that affliction. Verse 30, and Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? 
So, so Jesus now, he don't know nothing about the woman. He don't even know that she's there. It's her faith. So she touches his garment. She gets made, made whole. Jesus says, who touched me? Because he felt like, he felt like power had came out of him. I'm a little bit static. So, but you know, I, I, I kind of get excited. Once I get excited, I start screaming. All right, so I'm going to try to calm myself down. Calm down, Pastor Scale. Calm down. All right, here we go. So, so she heard about Jesus. She said, if I could just touch his clothes, I can be whole, be made, be made well. So she touches his clothes. Jesus feels the power come out of him. And he turns around and says, who touched me? And when he looked around to see her, to see, to see her who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Verse 34. And he said to her, here Jesus said to her, Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I really want you to get this. See, this lady heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus going throughout the land. That he was the that he was the re the redeemer. That he would, that he had healing power. That he was raising people from the dead. When she hear, heard about that, she believed it. She got faith in it. Even though nothing had changed in her body, she believed in it. So she said, "I'm going to see this Jesus." And then she said, "If I could just touch him, I'll be made well." So she goes through the garden and, and everybody knows it was, it was unlawful for her to be out and at great risk for herself. She goes and she touches Jesus' garden and she's made, made touches Jesus' garment and she's made well. Now Jesus doesn't even know she's there. He, 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 he's on his way really to somebody else's house. And Jesus feels the power come out of him. And he turns around and says, who did that? Uh, yeah, another another one of the gospel says the disciple said to him, "Why are you asking that? All these people touching you?" But he said, "No, I feel power come out of me." So the lady falls down and tells him, "Like, hey, here's the whole story. You know, tell him, tell, tell him about. I heard about you. I got this problem. I knew if I could but touch your clothes, I'd be made well. I believe that you're the redeemer." She probably told him the whole story. So Jesus says to her, "Your faith." has made you well. So then her acting on her faith, her trust in God is what changed her life. Uh, do, do, do you see that? See, her faith in Jesus Christ, her believing that she would receive if she could but, but touch him, that faith is what made her whole. And Jesus says many times throughout his ministry that it's your faith that makes the difference. It's your trust and your belief that made the difference. That is activating the faith of God. I can move towards the faith of God through my actions. Amen? Amen. So it's a, my absolute trust in God is the faith of God. All right, now, we got that. We understand that faith. It was her faith that made her whole. Now I want you to look at another story that we talked about in my last series. Uh, I want you to go to the man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5, verse 2. John chapter 5, verse 2. Because grace is not the same thing as faith. Grace is not the same thing as faith. One more time. Grace is not the same thing as as faith. All right, now, John chapter 5. Go. This is the story about the guy at the pool of Bethesda. So now there is, there, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. When who, then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease that he had. 
Now a certain man, it don't tell us nothing about the man, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. All right, now, remember the woman with the issue of blood, she'd had hers for 12 years. She'd had the issue for 12 years and, and she heard about Jesus. Now, this guy, he's had an infirmity for 38 years years and the scriptures don't tell us anything about him hearing about Jesus he laying there in, the, in his infirmity we said he's stuck in his situation that's the last lesson go back and look at that and, and, and it's time to move to a new level go back and look at that okay look at verse 6 I listen to that verse 6 so says that when Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had already been in that condition a long time he said to him do you want to be made well? Verse, uh, I'm not going to teach that lesson again, so go back and hear that. Verse 7. The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Now, get this, because it's real subtle, but you need to understand it. Jesus comes to the guy and says, do you want to be made well? He looks up at this person who asked him, does he want to be made well? He don't even know who he is, so he can't say Jesus. He just says, sir, uh, uh, mister, uh, whoever you are. Uh, listen, I maybe I would, but I can't because I don't have anybody to help me when I get ready to go down. Verse 8, Jesus said to him, rise Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Now, this is a different situation. This man hadn't heard about Jesus. He wasn't seeking Jesus. He hadn't gotten faith for Jesus. Uh, he didn't think Jesus could change his situation. But Jesus found a man. The man didn't even know who Jesus was. And, and we know that because at verse 12, uh, later on they ask him, uh, he's carrying his bed. And John 5, 12, they says, why are you carrying your bed? And he says, who, he says who, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who had been healed did not know who he was. So get this, this man at the pool did not know who Jesus was. And at the pool, there's five porches. It's full of sick people, paralyzed people, people with all kinds of conditions and, and this man had been there for a long time so they'd all been there for a long time we don't know how many people there were but there was a lot of people there sick and out of all the people there sick Jesus chose him out of the multitude Jesus chose him and made him whole now this, my friend, is the grace of God working. This is grace. See, that man didn't earn to be healed. He didn't have the faith to be healed. He wasn't seeking Jesus to be healed. It was not of his work. Jesus sought him out and made him whole. Jesus granted him unmerited, undeserved, uh, unearned favor. It's unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. Think of it this way. Faith is me seeking God. Faith is me believing and seeking God. Grace, on the other hand, is God seeking me. Or God seeking you. One of them, you go after God, grace is God coming after you. John 4, 8 says, draw, draw near to God, faith. James chapter 4, verse 8, I'm sorry, I think I said John. 
James chapter 4, verse 8 says, draw near to God. Faith. Draw near to God. Faith. Then the last will say, and he will draw near to you. Grace. See, faith gives me access to grace. I don't really earn it. God just gives me favor. In these next few months and going into next year, I want to walk in the grace of God. I want God to just give me favor. Romans 5.1 says this. Listen to this now. Therefore, having been justified by faith, having been justified, having been made right with God, having been made my, my debt being cleared with God, uh, being justified by faith, that'd be faith in Jesus Christ, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory and the glory of God. So now, by my faith in Jesus Christ, he's given me access to the grace of God where I want to stand. My faith in Jesus Christ is the doorway to give me access into the house that is the grace of God. Now that as I get into the grace of God, as I get access to the grace of God, now I want to activate all of the benefits that are available to me through the grace of God. I want to initiate, I want to activate everything that's mine through the grace of God. I want to have the full benefit of God's grace. That's what we want to do in the next few lessons. Sunday, next Sunday, and, and Wednesday. Just, just stay with me. And, and we're just going to get, we're going to activate the full grace of God in our lives. You can't earn it. You can't, you don't deserve it. You don't have to worry about your wrongs. No, no, no. Through faith in Jesus Christ, just like out of a whole multitude of people, Jesus went up to this one man and said, listen, I'm going to do something for you. Out of all the people in the world, Jesus is going to come up to you. Say, I want to do something for you. I want to change your life. I want to bring you into prosperity. I want to bring you into wholeness. I want to heal you. I, I want you to have the best. Jesus, because of God's love and God's grace, unerring favor of God, God seeking you want to change your life for the next few months. So stay with me right here on Facebook Live and, and uh, we're getting ready to, to do YouTube Live. We already upload to YouTube. We're going to do YouTube Live here pretty soon. So stay with me over the next few lessons. That's this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock, next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Stay with me as we learn how to access the grace of of God. Amen. Amen. But I just thank you for your word. I thank you that the word is true and just. We're going to be more than just hearers of your word, but also doers. Listen, if you're out there and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, what a day, what a day, what a day for you. You have been thinking that, that you had to get better, that you had to fix your problems, that you had to get your mind right. You don't got to do any of that. All you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ and the grace of God will get you saved. So all you have to do is say this short prayer, mean it from your heart. And you got to mean it from your heart. Now you just can't say words, you got to mean it from your heart. If you just say, Jesus, come into my life. I turn from my past and I turn towards you. I believe that you died on the cross just for me. And on the third day, the power of the Holy Spirit raised you up. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. Amen. 
Now, if you said that a wonderful thing happened, you actually got adopted into God's family. You get all the full benefits that I get, and I'm here preaching and been doing this for a long time. You immediately got all the full benefits that I got. So now what you need to do is get yourself into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Continue to watch me here on Facebook and watch our other ministers on Facebook and, and YouTube and, and through our website because we're going to teach you the Word. We're going to teach you the Word that will change your life. But get other people who will teach you the Word that will change your life. Surround yourself with believers as you begin to live out this Christian life. God bless you so much for joining us. If this message has had an impact on you, then please support our ministry. Uh, you know, it costs to do things, so the gospel, the salvation is free, but to get out the gospel costs. So please support our ministry and our ministry. People will put that up on, on a note so you can see how to do that. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you this Sunday, this coming Sunday at 11 11 30 honey at 11 30 god bless you have a wonderful night talk to you soon amen